Jason, we finally got him here. Finally, bro. A little bit late. My bad. All good. Had to get my boy Davies in K-Town one time. Um, um, you know, for everybody out there that doesn't know, uh, 32nd and 5th between Broadway is Koreatown here in Manhattan. You from a long ways uptown? Uptown, east side, <laughs> Spanish Harlem, man. El Barrio, let's go. Yeah, and last time we, we linked up, man, you brought me to where you used to play ball at. Yeah, uptown, facts. remember that? Yeah, hell yeah, man. So I just felt like now, I know I had to bring you down to where I'd be kicking it at. I'm, I'm, I'm honored, <laughs> man. I'm, this shit look good already. Best yeah. interview already, man. You Word. got the whole, whole spread out. Had to get some of these green, you know about the green bottles? Nah, you gotta put me on, man. I don't All know right, about man. Me. So that look like chicken, <laughs> and that look like eggs. <laughs> Anything else, you gotta put me on. But in K-Town, we always start every meal with soju, man. And this okay. is a rice liquor, it's a little peach flavor. Okay. All right, I know you don't really do clear like that, but. Yeah. Nah, I'm doing it, man. I'm doing it today. Yes, sir. Is this like um, sake you can't um, pour your own? Yes, see, you already know, man. You're supposed to pour one for me, brother. Come on. <laughs> So yeah, this is basically the Korean version of sake, and you know, it really is supposed to be somebody older than you. Okay. You pour for them, or your okay. friends, you pour for them, but you know, we equal, so we just pour for each other chilling. <laughs> but Dave, man, I really just want to congratulate you on getting this project out and the new deal with Def Jam, man. Thank you, One man. time. I really appreciate it. Wow. So yeah, man, right here we got the Korean fried chicken, the real KFC, everyone knows. Short ribs, all beef, because Dave don't do no pork on his fork. He said the real KFC. I <laughs> the just real that. Yeah. Korean That's fried tea. chicken, man. <laughs> and then we got kimchi pancakes right here. Kimchi is like a, a Korean fermented radish. So okay. they make a little pancake out of that. Um, really, man, it's all about you, man. Just having a good time, like you said, best interview. Yeah. That chicken look like everything. Yo, man, dive in, bro. Please, please. Yeah, bro, dive in. And the project's out now. Kyrie Chanel, man. Make sure y'all get that. And it was bugged out, because when you first came to the Vibe office, you were like, you told us a title, and we, and we were like, Kyrie Chanel? Who that? Your, your, your new girl or something? But when you broke down the story about how, you know, you was waiting on your daughter to be born, Word. it really touched a nerve for us at Vibe magazine, especially Daytuan. He got four daughters at home. Yeah, you that's know? what he told me. That's yeah, funny. man. But for you, when did you really know, like, yo, I'm naming this project after Shorty? Um. Really when she was born, like, I was really recording it during the process of my girl being pregnant. Right. So, once Kyrie was born, I really knew it, like, nah, I'm gonna name this tape after her. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it was, that was some life-changing shit. I never seen no shit like that before. Like, I watched her be born. And that was your first kid, right? My first kid. Man. So, just to, um, to see that, that happen and then watch her grow, one or two months, by the time she was two months, I really knew, I was like, nah, I'm gonna name the tape after her. You know what I'm saying? How did, how did um, her mother feel about that? Was she yeah, flattered? I, was she like, oh, she was like, she was like, oh, she was like, oh, that's what you named it? Like, <laughs> she supported it though, yeah, she definitely supported it, but I was, I'm, once I got my mind made up, my mind be made up, I was like, nah, Kyrie Chanel, like, that's her name. I'm gonna name it after Sticking her. Like, with it. The whole world gonna be saying her name. A lot of people were confused on, on, online, they, they thought that, Kari Chanel was your album, and I was trying to tell him, no, nah. it's not the album, it's a mixtape. Mixtape, baby. So we still got the, I got the, debut. the real fire coming, like you said, produced by Nas, executive yeah. produced by Nas. The debut album will be um, Def Jam, um, slash Master Pill, slash Triangle Offense. Um, it'll be executive produced by Esco. Okay. Nas, you know what I'm saying? You getting real hands on with it? Yeah, we locking in. We're going okay. to lock in. Uh, we already started really, I mean, gathering just ideas, I mean, just different topics and conversations. I got the title. I mean, I ain't gonna say it. You man. ready to share that with us? Nah. <laughs> save it, man, because yeah, I know they always say your debut album is like your baby, man. Yeah. You know, like that's that's the one, right? I just I just plan ahead, man. I like to I like to be prepared for when the time because I know the time won't come. Just like I knew this time was gonna come. You know what I mean, so it's like um 2017, man. What's up? Beef short ribs, man. What? Beef short ribs, yeah, and, and they cook it down so it's so tender. Falls right off the bone, no homo. Right off the bone, I'm you don't need a knife next. or nothing. Yeah, man. And on the project, you really got a bunch of OGs with you. It's, it's like, you got Fab on the joint, Siegel, who, I don't, people don't know this, but he's also one of my favorite rappers of all time. I know you too, but like, I grew up right, side of, right outside of Philly and Jersey, and like, Sieg was, 
in that area, you know, Sieg was basically the Jay-Z of, of oh. South Jersey, yeah, Philly area. I know you took mad trips down, down to Philly, you know, yeah, Sieg in your like, endeavors. I'm so glad, like, I was able to even lock in with him, you know what I'm saying? And, like, get him in that mode to go back and forth with me. And, like, like we was in the studio, like, might have took us, like, an hour to make that record. That's it? But we was in the studio, like, four or five hours. Oh, wow. Just talking, you know what I'm saying? And just zoning out, me playing him other records I got. And him telling me, like, nah, you, you really talk that talk, you know what I'm saying? So, it was just, like, with me, that's somebody I was idolizing throughout the whole state mm. property and his Rockefeller shit and all of that. So, the movies. So, I'm like, damn, I'm in the same room with, with C, you know what I'm saying? And he, and he respecting my shit. And we doing a record together. So it was like, this is crazy. Like. It must have been a surreal, because Sieg, like, you don't jump on records with just anybody, you know? Like, there isn't 50 new rappers that have collabos with Beans. There's like a handful, you know, real it's talk. A small handful, that's a fact. That's a super fact. But now that the project's out, man, and, and, and you know, obviously, you're with the new machine. People are kind of wondering, like, does that, is he leaving Nas and leaving Mass Appeal? And they don't know. really understand it. It's a partnership, right? I'm still Master Pill. Nas is gonna be the executive producer of my debut album on Def Jam, but basically me and Wayne got the triangle office. That's our own company, our own label, our own brand. We did what we did with Master Pill. So basically we took what we already had with Master Pill and what, what me and him built okay. and partnered up with Def Jam. Gotcha. I didn't sign a, a 360 or like it's not like I'm signed to them. You know what I mean, it's like I'm a Def Jam artist, but I did a partnership, so we we really business partners. I mean, and that's the best way to, to stay with the home team, the people who we came in the game with, but get that bigger machine behind it. You know, everybody know Def Jam has a lot of legs. Mm -hmm. You know, not only in hip hop but in, in music overall. Being from New York, that's like that's like epic for me. You know what I'm saying? Because like Def Jam was the home of a lot of my favorite. Companies growing up, right, you know what right. I mean, Murder Inc. and Rough Riders and Rockefeller, Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? Just a lot of, lot of different dudes. You know what I mean? So I'm just glad to be a part of that history. You know what I mean? Now my name is in that book as well. Right. Because I mean, right now, you know, real talk, your name is not synonymous with people in New York who are really spitting. Like, you know, there's a lot of talk about, oh, New York ain't really got it like that no more. But yeah. We got people like Dave V sitting right here, you know, ASAP Rocky, Flatbush Zombies, like a lot of dudes who really took what the OGs before y'all came, but you, you're adding yeah. your own twist to it, you know? Yeah. It, like, he don't sound like Jay, he don't sound like Bleak, he don't sound yeah. like Beans. You can tell he got the essence of all these phenomenal MCs that we, you know, came up listening to, but he yeah. added his own flavor to it. That's what I grew up on. I hope you're getting me struggling with these yeah, chopsticks. Yeah. I got you, bro. You getting all this? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do dirty, but fuck it. 